mental and physical abuse. That's the topic we're going to have on Self Love Monday. How you doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, what I was actually doing is I was putting together a video series that I'm actually uh, getting ready to put out for sale. And one of the topics that I just completed a video on was uh, infidelity and abuse. And I figured, man, what's more important on self-love than dealing with this issue on abuse? And so that's why we're having this conversation today. Um, to me, mental, which means anybody that's degrading you, putting you down, stripping you of your self-worth, um, your self-value, um, that's what I would consider to be uh, mental abuse. Those are the people you need to cut out of your life. And I'm not a person that tells you to really to cut out people, but when it comes to a topic on abuse, yes, this is probably one of the very few topics where you'll hear me say, cut people loose. Um, it's that serious. Because what most people don't recognize is mental abuse will destroy you physically. There's an old saying that we heard when we were young kids. It says, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never harm you. I tell people one of the biggest lies ever told. The reason for that is the sticks and stones may break your bones. And you could actually go to the hospital and get healed or get stitched up or whatever. And you can get over that physical. But that mental abuse, the words that they're talking about, is why most people are not pursuing their dreams and goals. Why we're not going out and living the life that we say we want because we've allowed what people said in the programming to stop us in our tracks from moving forward. And so, again, this is why I'm talking about the mental abuse, because that stuff will destroy you again from a mental perspective, which will ultimately destroy you physically. So, again, when you have that and, 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 and while we're on this topic. The most important person to watch out in this mental abuse is yourself. Because even if people are saying things about you and you have a strong uh, self-esteem, you can even get past that. Um, one of the things I used to do, like there was someone used to, you know, they not say anything to me attack wise, but they were always a negative Everything that comes out of their mouth, they, they got to be controversial. They got to take the opposite side. And it used to bother me because, again, I, I was one of those people. I didn't really want to be around negative people, but this person plays a major role in my life. So I was around them because of that. And um, I had started saying, man, that joke crazy. And what, I, what came back to me is it was hurting that person's feelings Anytime that I said that and I said, isn't it amazing how people can dish it out, but they can't take it. And that's not even really an attack. I'm just saying, who he crazy. And I'm saying that in a playful way, but the person took it personal. And so not to say that I stopped saying it. I just stopped verbally, <laughs> verbally saying it. But my thought process is they still got some issues and they're their issues and they're not trying to resolve them. You know, and as you guys know, the stuff that I, I do my objective would be to help a person to feel better because that's where it comes from is how people feel about themselves. It, that old saying, hurt people, hurt people. So I know where it's coming from, but that's a person that's not looking to change who they are and where they're at. Their motto is, this is who I am. This is who I've always been. And I ain't going to change. That's their motto. Man, what a way to live, to, to, to think that, because you're, the way you think today is based on your past. So to say this is just who I am means your past is now really your future. Because you're not doing anything. You're not going to make any adjustments. What a way to live to know that your past is actually your future. I, mean, I tell people like for me, for example, my future is the brightest days that I'm going to ever have. You know, because people always talk about the good old days. Man, my good old days is in the future. 
I'm creating them all the time. To ever sit back and think that my past is the best it's ever been, and then gonna, gonna say this is just who I am, basically saying you're not looking to grow. You guys heard me say many times as human beings, if we're not growing, life's gonna be boring, depressing, or something. And that's why this person has that kind of attitude. Why? They're not looking to grow. That means their demeanor is going to stay the same. And so, but anyway, in that particular person's case, they're still in my life. I had to figure out a way, the conversation to get past listening to their conversation, but it never affected my self-esteem. And that's really kind of what I was getting to here is if your esteem is very strong, you can even hear some of that stuff and still be able to deflect it. But if you have a low self-esteem yourself, you need to stay away from those people because they're not going to do anything but keep you down. It becomes that old saying that you take one step forward and they're going to knock you two step back. Folks, you don't need that in your life. And again, I'm, I'm not a person that tells you to cut people out. But and especially if it's somebody that's close to you family wise. But even if you do keep them in your life, make sure you spend less and less time around them so that they don't mess you up. Because that mental abuse, like I said, it will affect you physically. So now when we get on this physical abuse, this is something that to me is not acceptable. The moment a person even acts like, you know, I've seen ladies say, well, he raised his hand. So what you waiting on? He raised his hand. It's time to go. That's simple. I know some, but well, no, time to go. If he's getting that angry to that point where he's thinking of hitting you, that means one day he's going to get angry enough. He's going to actually hit you. Um, I've seen um, examples of that where, matter of fact, I had one young lady where, and I talked about it in the, in the video that I did for the, the system I put together, where she talked about the fact that he hasn't hit her, but he gets so furious and the rage is so real that there are times that she runs and locks herself in the bathroom just to get away from him. Folks, you can't stay in that kind of relationship. That's relationship. When they do it, you're out. I know a lot of people say, but Ron, you know, you got to give people a chance. No, that's their issue. They have to get that resolved. I'm not going to stay here and put position myself in harm's way when you're not doing anything to resolve your issue. I'm pretty sure if they've raised their voice, they did that. You had the conversation with them trying to get them to calm down. Try, you've been there with them. They're not just like this person. They weren't looking to change. Why would I tell myself you need to stay there and be patient with them? Folks, I'm a firm believer in supporting people and being there for them. If they're putting in the work. You follow me? If you're going out here and doing the things to get your life on track, I'm here to support you. If you're not doing it, I'm not going to sit there and be a part of the abuse, especially when you're not looking to change. But from a physical perspective, again, if they're, if you're watching this video and this, and there's a person that you're in the house with that has put their hands on you or at times put their hands on you, you need to shut this video off, pack your bags and leave and never come back. Again, I know we're saying if, if the person went and got help, but they're going to have to prove a lot to put your, 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 to ever step back into that arena again, at least for me. Um, but I'm not going to sit there and be a part of the abuse while they're in the process of getting the cure. So again, if you're in a position, get out. If they're, uh, life is happy right now and they're smiling, even if they're looking at you right now and they're smiling, pack your bags and leave because now is the easiest time for you to get out because they think everything is beautiful. When things are tough, that's when they're going to look for you to try to leave and they're going to try to block doors and do all the other stuff. And that makes it harder. But never, ever get to a point where abuse becomes acceptable. Again, I had a young lady, um, when I talked about that, I said about how you feel about yourself because that's what this all comes down to. Uh, the person that's the abuser has destroyed your self-esteem 
And that's the only reason, only way they can get you to stay is to get you to believe that they really love you and they're really looking out for you and they really, all that kind of stuff. Folks, if you're putting your hands on me, you're physically harming me. I know some people go, well, that's, you know, people got issues. Exactly. But I have to look out for me. I have to love me enough to know that no matter what it is that you're going through, I'm not going to let you abuse me. You guys follow me? I'm not, listening, I'm not one of those that's going to listen to any kind of conversation that people are coming up with trying to justify why you need to stay there and be patient with the person and work through them when they're putting their hands on you. It ain't going to happen. They're putting their hands up on you. You got to go. It's that simple. Um, again, they go get the help. We may see them every now and then, but like I said, it's going to take a lot for there to even be a thought to put yourself by yourself with them and in a, in a, in a position where they could abuse you again, because some instances where that has occurred, people came back and this time it became deadly because the person didn't get cured. But they knew that this person is willing to leave now because they showed that. And it puts you in an even more dangerous position. That's why I said, if you walk, walk. Don't turn back. It's going to take a rare situation for you because, again, most people aren't looking to get cured. So don't stay there with them, hoping that they decide to get cured. Don't put your life in that kind of position. So I really wanted to cover that today because, again, um, the abuse, oh, and I didn't cover that, but the one young lady, um, when I talked about the self-esteem, she was saying how, um, she said, you don't know how powerful and how true that is. She said, my husband physically abused me for 13 years. And she said, and it hit me one day, when did I get to a point that this was acceptable behavior? When did my esteem get so low that it was okay for someone to put their hands on me? And she said, and that's when I decided I'm done enough. And she said, he came at her to attack her. She said, I grabbed him where it counts. She said, I've never heard a human being scream that loud in my life. She said, I released him. He came back again. She said, so I grabbed him there again. And that's when he realized this was no longer a game. This was for real. They ended up divorced. And she was telling me, she said, but what's amazing and she says, I'm now with a guy that treats me like a princess. She said, and I didn't even think that was possible. And I told her, I said, but you understand how you attracted a guy that treats you like a princess, right? And she kind of looked at me kind of puzzled like, and I said, because you recognize that you're a princess. And the moment you recognize you're a princess, see your standards raise. And when your standards raise, you're not gonna allow anyone that's going to try to tear you down mentally or physically you're going to block that immediately. And because of that, that standards being raised and the way she sees herself allows a different individual to show up and her be open to that person versus the person that's abusive. Because see, what some people do is they leave that. They don't make the adjustments as you guys keep hearing me say. It's about how you feel about yourself. That's everything that I'm trying to share and teach. If you don't make the adjustments in you, You'll leave one abusive relationship and end up right back with someone else that's abusive and ask, why do I keep getting into abusive relationships? It's because you haven't made the adjustments. You have to learn to love that person you see in the mirror. You got to understand that person is valuable and worthy. And when you get to that point, you will block anyone that creates mental or physical abuse in your direction. So again, this is... Um, one of those conversations that this is a tough one to have because you know how serious this particular topic is. And again, if you're watching this and you're in that situation, get out yesterday. There's no, no reason to sit there and think about should I, it's not even a should I. Go, leave. Shut this off, if it's your phone, take it with you, but leave. It's time to go. Take back control of the way you feel about yourself Understand your value and your worth. Don't let anyone, and I mean anyone, strip you of that. All right. And as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. I look forward to talking to you again next Monday for those that are listening to Self Love Monday. For those who are into relationships, 
I look forward to seeing you on Thursday, on Relationship Thursday. Whatever you guys are doing, go out here and enjoy yourself. And I'll talk to you later. Take care.